Hey everyone, my name is Anne and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be crocheting this really cute sweater. I added some ribboning to the sleeves and I think it looks so cute. But um, I'll be making a small in this video, but you can find sizes X small to 3X large in this tutorial and also in the written pattern that I have linked down below. But here are the supplies you'll be needing. So now getting started on this pattern, we're going to be working up the front and back panels. So I will first make a slip knot. From this point, we're going to make a chain of 77, but since this video contains sizes X small to 3X large, the amount of chains you'll be making for each size is going to be indicated right on the side over here. But since I am making a size small, I am going to make a chain of 77. And to make a chain, you just want to yarn over, pull through. That's our first chain. Again, just yarn over and pull through until you have a total of 77. So I have now made it back here with my chain and now we're going to begin on row one. So beginning row one, skip this first chain and inserting our hook into the second chain, we're going to work a half double crochet. To work a half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. We're going to do this again, yarn over, Insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through three. And now you simply want to work these half double crochets into each chain across. So I have just finished working these half double crochets into each chain all the way across my row. And now once you reach the end, just chain one and turn your work around. Moving on to row two, we're going to skip this chain one because that does not count as our first stitch. And into this first stitch, we're gonna work a front bar half double crochet. And to work a front bar half double crochet, yarn over, Insert your hook only into this front bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Again, instead of going into both of these loops, we are only going to go into this front bar. So yarn over, insert your hook into this front bar, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Now you want to work front bar half double crochets into each stitch all the way down your row. So I have just finished making it all the way down my row with my front bar half double crochets. And just as we did before, chain one and turn your work around. That chain one does not count as our first stitch. So now to continue this pattern for our shoulder strap, you want to repeat row two with those front bar half double crochets until you have a total of nine rows. But once again, since this video contains sizes X small to 3X large, the amount of rows you'll be making for each size is going to be indicated right on the side. But I'm just going to work up my, my nine rows and then I'm going to see you guys back for the next steps. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I am back here with my nine rows working these front posts or front bar half double crochets And this is what my shoulder strap is looking like so from here We're actually not going to we're not going to cut and fasten off We're gonna move directly to working the neckline. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on the neckline So moving on to the neckline, we're going to begin on row one and to begin row one, you just want to chain and turn your work around. And now you want to work front bar half double crochets, just as we were doing previously, all the way down your row until you have eight stitches at the end remaining. So I'm going to work that up really quickly and then I will meet you guys back once I have eight stitches at the end of my row. So I have made it back here coming all the way down my row until I have eight stitches at the end remaining. I just chained and turned my work around. So now moving on to row two, it is a very easy row, just a regular row. So beginning into this first stitch, we're simply going to front bar half double crochet into each stitch all the way down. And then once you reach the end, of course, you just want to chain one and turn your work around. But I'm just going to go all the way down my row and then I will let you guys back once I have reached the end. So once you have finished coming all the way down your row, we're now going to be moving on to row three. So for row three into this first stitch, you want to front bar half double crochet into each stitch all the way across until you have three stitches at the end remaining. So it's kind of similar to what we did to our first row, leaving eight stitches at the end, except this time we're gonna do that same thing and leave three stitches at the end of your row. So I'm going to do that really quickly, then I will see you guys back when I'm all done. So I have just finished coming all the way down my row until I have three stitches at the end. Chain one and turn my work around. Now moving on to row four, it's just gonna be a regular row of these half double crochets. So just again, beginning into this first stitch, all we're gonna do is just front bar half double crochet into each stitch all the way across your row. Chain one and turn your work around. So I'll work that up really quickly, then I will see you guys back once I have reached the other end. And so as you can see, I have made it all the way down my row. And now moving on to row five, it's just going to be a repeat row of row three. So what we're gonna do is that beginning into this first stitch, you want to front bar half double crochet into each stitch across until you have five stitches at the end remaining, then chain one and turn your work around. So I'm going to work all the way down my row until I have three stitches at the end, and then I will meet you guys back shortly. So I have just finished working all the way down my row until I have these three stitches at the end. Then I chained one and turned my work around. Now the next section to our neckline is really simple. From row six to 10, we're going to work regular front bar half double crochet rows doing nothing weird at all. We're just going to be working straight across from row six to 10. So I'm going to work those 10 rows, well not 10 rows, but I'm gonna go up to 10 rows and then I will see you guys back very shortly. So this is what my work is looking like after 10 rows for my neckline. This is what row six to 10, so we just went straight across. And now that we have done our decreases coming down here, we're going to now begin on doing our increases. So we're pretty much going to do the opposite of what we did on this side. So we're going to begin on row 11. And for row 11, you want to front bar half double crochet into each stitch all the way down your row. And then instead of chaining one and turning, you're actually going to make a chain of four. So I'm going to work down my row and then I will make that chain of four with you guys. So I will see you guys in a bit. So I have made it all the way down my row with these front bar half double crochets. And then once you reach the end, make a chain of four. So that's one, two, three, and then four. Now turn your work around. 
Moving on to row 12, skipping this first chain and inserting our hook into this second chain, we're going to work three half double crochets into the three chains. So I'm going to do that with you guys. And now once you have finished half double crocheting into the three chains, you want to continue to front front bar half double crochet into each stitch all the way across until the end of your work, then chain one and turn your work around. So I'll go all the way down and then I will meet you guys back once I reach the end. So I have just finished working all the way down my row. And so now moving on to row 13, we're going to repeat row 11. So I'm going to, starting to this first stitch, I'm going to work front bar half double crochets into each stitch all the way across my row. And then instead of chaining one and turning, I'm actually going to make a chain of four and then turn. So I'm going to go down my row, make a chain of four, and then I will see you guys back for the next row. So I have just finished coming all the way down my row and then I chained four once I reach the end. And so now moving on to row 14, we're going to repeat row 12. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to half double crochet into those three chains beginning into the second chain. And then you want to continue down your row with your regular front bar half double crochets until you reach the end chain one and turn your work around so i'll go down my row and then i will see you guys back so i have made it all the way down my row once again chained and turned my work around so moving on to row 15 is going to be a little bit different so we're going to work our regular front bar half double crochets into each stitch and then once you reach the end, you want to make a chain of nine. So you're not going to make a chain of four. You're going to make a chain of nine once you reach the end. So I will go across my row, make that chain of nine, and then I will see you guys back for row 16. So I have worked all the way down my chain or all the way down my row and then made a chain of nine once I reach the end. So from this point, we are not going to cut and fasten off just yet. We're going to move directly to working the shoulder strap on the opposite side. So which is pretty much the same thing that we did over here. So yeah, let's just get started on the second shoulder strap. So moving on to the second shoulder strap on the opposite side. Beginning on row one, we're, for, we're first going to work a half double crochet into eight of these chains. So beginning into the second chain, work eight half double crochets. And then after you have worked those double crochets, you want to continue working front bar half double crochets into each stitch across until you reach the end. And as always, chain one and turn your work around. And so I have just finished up row one, chained and turned my work around. And now the rest of our shoulder strap is super easy. You want from row two to row nine, we're just going to work a regular row of front bar half double crochets. So just beginning into this first stitch, work front bar half double crochets into each stitch across, chain one and turn your work once you reach the end. Rows and then until you have nine rows, I will see you guys back when I'm all done. So I am back here with my shoulder strap. I have nine rows in total. And then once I reached the end, I did cut and fasten off, as you can see here. And then that completes our first panel. You want to repeat all the steps, which I've already done here. I want to repeat all the steps that we did previously for our second panel because our front and back panels are identical. And now that we have both of our panels, we're going to move on to the seaming. So getting started on the seaming, I have my tapestry needle and some yarn. And what we're going to do is that we will 
whip stitch up the side of our sides until we have seven inches from the top remaining and that seven inches from the top is going to leave room for our sleeves but just to show you how to seam our bodices together I'm going to insert my hook through both of the panels and then pull it straight through just like this now you want to come back around to the next two stitches do the same thing insert your hook pull it straight through into the next two stitches insert your hook pull it straight through now you want to whip stitch all the way up the side until you have seven inches from the top remaining and then you can cut and fasten off once you reach that point So I am back here and I have just finished seaming up my sides. I went all the way across here until I had seven and a half inches from the top. And then I did the same on the opposite side as well. I went all the way up here till seven and a half inches from the top. And then the next thing you would need to stitch together is just our two shoulder straps. So I just went all the way across here, cut and fastened off. Did the same on the opposite side as well. And then now that we have our main bodice section all done, we're going to move on to working the sleeves. So now moving on to the sleeves, we're first going to be making a slip knot. And then after the slip knot, we're going to make a chain of 48. And so after you have made your chain, what we're going to do is that we're going to slip stitch into the very first chain that we made. So I'm going to insert my hook right into this very first chain that we made. And we're going to slip stitch to secure. So just yarn over, pull through everything. And you do want to make sure that your chain is not twisted by this point. So you can go ahead and check that now. So beginning on row one, chain one, turn your work around. Now beginning to this first, actually we're going to chain two, sorry. Chain two and turn your work around. And that chain two does not count as our first stitch. So beginning into this very first chain, we're going to work a double crochet. To work a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into that very first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through another two loops, and that's how we're going to be working our double crochets. Doing this again, you want to yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and now you want to work double crochets into each stitch all the way around. So I have just finished working these double crochets into each chain all the way around. And now to join this row, you just want to insert your hook into this very first stitch that we made and slip stitch to secure, just like this. Chain two and turn your work around. Moving on to round two, into this very first stitch, again that chain two does not count as our first stitch, so into this very first stitch we're going to work a front bar double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook only into this very front bar, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Doing this again, you want to yarn over, insert your hook only into that very front bar, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through two. 
And now you want to work these front bar double crochets into each stitch all the way around your row. And then once you reach the end, I'm going to show you how to slip stitch to join this row. So I am back here working these front bar double crochets and now once again to join this row you want to insert your hook into that very first stitch that we made, pull it straight through to slip stitch, chain two and then turn your work around. And now to continue our sleeve pattern, you want to repeat this row, which is row two with our front bar double crochets until you have a total of, of 29 rows. But once again, since this pattern contains sizes X small to three X large, the amount of the amount of rows that you'll be making for each size is gonna be indicated right on the side over here. But since I am making a size small, I'm going to make, make 29 rows. I cannot speak right now. <laughs> But yeah, I'll work up my 29 rows and then I will see you guys back when I'm all done. So this is what my sleeve is looking like after I have done 29 rounds with these front bar double crochets. And once we have the sleeve all done, we're not going to be cut, we're not going to cut and fasten off just yet. We're going to be moving directly to working the cuff from this point. So yeah, let's get started on working the cuff. So now getting started on the cuff, I have already slip stitched into this first stitch on the very last row for our sleeve. And now from this point, make a chain of 12. So after you have your chain of 12, we're gonna begin on row one. So skipping this first chain and inserting our hook into the second chain, we will slip stitch into each chain all the way across. To do a slip stitch, you want to insert your hook, yarn over, pull it straight through those two loops. Again, inserting your hook and then just pull it straight through. And again, just working these slip stitches into each chain all the way across. And so as you can see, I have done these slip stitches coming all the way down my row. And then now to join this row, we're going to slip stitch up two on the side. So into this very first side stitch, I'm going to slip stitch up one. And then slip stitch into the next stitch as well. And this should join the row to our sleeve. Now just turn your work around. Moving on to row two into this very first stitch. Again, those first two slip stitches do not count as a stitch. So into this first stitch, we're going to work a back bar slip stitch. So to work a back bar slip stitch, instead of going through both of these loops, we're only gonna be working into the back loops. So I'm going to insert my hook and then yarn over, pull through two, doing this into the next stitch, inserting my hook only to this back loop and then pull straight through. Now just work these back bar slip stitches into each stitch down your row. Once you have made it to the end of your row, go ahead and chain one and turn your work around. Now moving on to row three, this chain one does not count as our first stitch, so we're going to back bar slip stitch into each stitch all the way down our row. And then once you have worked these back bar slip stitches into each stitch, we're going to slip stitch up two on the side to join. I'm going to insert my hook into the side stitch, pull through, into the next stitch, pull through, and that should connect your row just like this. 
And now to continue the cuff, you want to repeat row two and row three, repeat alternating those two rows until you have worked into each stitch all the way around your sleeve. So basically you should just be working these rows of back bar slip stitches. So I'm going to do that into each stitch all the way around my sleeve to form the cuff. And then I will see you guys back once I am all done. Well, this is what my work is looking like after I have gone into each stitch all the way around my sleeve with these back bar slip stitch rows. And now that we have worked into each stitch, we're almost done with the cuff. The last thing we, we would need to do is just cut and fasten off and then simply whip stitch all the way down the two edges to seam it all up. So I'm just going to seam down my cuff. I'm going to be back here really quickly and then we're going to get started on the ribboning. Okay guys, so I am back here with my cuff all seamed up. This is what it is looking like so far. Really good. And now the last step you would need to do for your sleeve is just to add some ribboning. So what I did over here... So all I did to add the ribboning, I just took some ribbon you can use as much as you would like and I just wove it through skipping five rows, going to that sixth row, skipping five rows, going to that sixth row skipping five rows went into that sixth row i did this all the way down and then you can knot it or or put it in a bow like i did either way totally fine but um i'm just going to put the ribboning on my other sleeve really quickly again this is optional i really like how it looks so i'll do that really quickly and then i'll see you guys back So now this is what my complete sleeve is looking like. We did the sleeve, the cuff, and then the ribbon. And now once you've done all of this, you of course want to do this one more time for a second sleeve, which I have already showed you in the previous clip. And then once you have both of your sleeves, we're just going to seam this to our bodice, which is pretty straightforward. I'm going to turn my sleeve inside out so that the bad side is facing us. And then all you want to do is just put your sleeve right next to the armhole that we made in the seaming process and then just whip stitch all the way around until the end. Then once you reach the end, just cut and fasten off. But I'm going to attach both of my sleeves, so on this side and on the opposite side as well. And then we're going to move on to working the collar over here once I'm all done. So as you can see, I have made it back here with both of my sleeves attached to my bodice. This is what it is looking like so far. Looks really good. And now that we have both of our sleeves all complete, we're going to move directly to working the collar over here. So yeah, let's get started on that. So now beginning on the collar, I'm going to make a slip knot. And now from here, make a chain of 11. Once you have made your chain of 11, beginning on row one, we're going to skip this first chain and inserting our hook into the second chain, we're going to slip stitch in each chain across. Once you have finished up these slip stitches, chain one and turn your work around. Now beginning into this first stitch for row two, we're going to back bar slip stitch into each stitch all the way across our row. And once you have back bar slip stitched into each stitch, chain one, Turn your work around and now this collar is really easy to work up. All we're going to do is that we're going to repeat row two with these back bar slip stitches until we have a total of 86 rows. So I'm going to finish working up my 86 rows and then I'm going to see you guys to attach the collar to our bodice. Okay. 
So I have just finished working my 86 rows with these back bar slip stitches. And now once you reach the end, you do want to cut and fasten off. And then after you fasten off, grab your bodice, which I have over here. Grab your bodice and then you just want to take your collar, put it evenly all the way around your bodice. And then once you have that, you want to slip stitch your collar to your bodice all the way around until you have made it to the end and then you can also slip stitch up the sides as well but i'm simply going to not slip stitch whip stitch <laughs> but i'm simply going to whip stitch all the way around the base of my head hole and then that's going to be the last steps to our project so i'm just going to fix this all up and then i will see you guys back So now this is what my collar is looking like after I have whip stitch all the way around the base of the head hole. The collar is all done. It looks really good. And that is pretty much the end of our project. The last thing you would need to do is just weave in all of your loose ends using a tapestry needle as usual. And that is the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this helpful. Bye! If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. If you bought this pattern, it would be super helpful if you left a positive review. But yeah, that's all. Bye!